You're watching Shooting the Club with Mike Benny Rowe and Gil Barden. But it wasn't the cold hand of death on my shoulder, it was more the lubed finger of, oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week we welcome back guest host Dr Phil. What made you come back to the madness? I'm not being paid, I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I enjoyed it, but, you know. But that would be a lie. What have you got in store for us this week on the show, Biz? Well, this week I'm bringing a story about, well, basically Jason Momoa's... <laughs> Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that, should I? Can we do the showbiz now? <laughs> Let me see the peen. Well, I suppose we'll have to wait for that. But on screen now, you can see all the ways of getting hold of us. It's at The Could TV on social media, where you can follow us. The Could.TV for our website and on YouTube or podcast services. Look for Chewing The Could and hit subscribe. And as the names of people who have reached out and violated our special areas ooh, on social media go along the bottom of the screen, we go to Mike and The Buzz. Pets. Yes. So how many pets do you? I do not, no. Have I have proxy pets. Proxy pets. Because mm. your, your mum has several animals. Yes, my mum has two, three cats and a, and a dog. Mm -hmm. And well, they're named are? Ava. The dog. The dog. Sebastian and Felix, two boy cats. Mm -hmm. And Olivia, or Livy Cat, the youngest cat. Okay, not goldfish then. Not Livy goldfish, cat. no. Livy Cat, definitely fish. No, and as everybody knows, I have George. Um, well, they've brought out a, a list of the top ten trendiest dog names of the year. Do I want to know? What do you think might be on this list? Top ten trendiest dog names. Mm. Mm. Wait, look, look. Sorry, I'm. How cute? I mean, absolutely. Oh, very cute. Fur babies. Oh, I don't know. Let me think. Um, Ava, George are not on there. Oh, they're not on there. They're not okay. on there. I mean, people tend to name things after royalty and stuff, don't they? Is there, is there a Louis in, in there? There's not a Louis. There's no Louis. There's a Katie. There's a Katie. Okay. A Katie. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, Spot. No, not Spot. No, no. Rex. Not Rex either. Oh. Not doing very well. I'm not doing very well at all, am I? What so, dogs? Number, number ten is Brie. As in the cheese? As in the cheese. I don't like cheese. That's OK, but it's a dog, not cheese. But even so. What oh, smell of cheese? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was the gallery saying, I don't like cheese, therefore I don't, don't like, like dogs. dogs. Which is why we had an agreement. Um, Suki, spelt with a T. How do you spell Suki with a T? T S U K I. Oh, Suki. That's what I said, Suki. Yeah, Suki. <laughs> what I said, Suki. <laughs> okay, I presume that's a uh, Far Eastern um, it import. Doesn't, it doesn't say. Doesn't say? Okay, doesn't well, say. you expect. Just says I, top, I mean, top 10. Okay, I mean, yeah. it, it sounds like it ought to be of a Far Eastern mm -hmm. or Asian origin. Yeah. Porsche. Oh, Porsche. <laughs> Wasn't that um, Porsche de Rossi? She was. Ellen DeGeneres' partner for a long time. Oh, mm. OK. Yes, and Maybe. then was in Modern Family, I think. There we go. <laughs> Useless facts of information about the name Porsche. That's OK. <laughs> um, then we've got Katie. Yes. Yeah. Mably. M Mably? Mably. Oh, OK. M-A-B-L-I. OK, I've never heard of that before, but go Mably. Yeah. Uh, Smokey. OK, yep. Preston. OK. And Top... Dog's name of this year, Mike. <laughs> Mike the dog. Well, you've also got Mike the, the monster from Monsters, Inc. Yeah. Mike. Famous. Dog's name, Mike. What's your dog called, Mike? Well, at least you didn't call George Mike. That would have been very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> this know. is my friend Mike that. and his dog, Mike. Yeah, no, right. that, would, that wouldn't would work. Would Mike like a belly tickle? Yes, he would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yes, no, yeah, I suppose, yes. Why is Mike humping the... Yeah, yeah, it's, it would work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, apparently people names are becoming very, very popular with pets now. OK, so um, you were really, you were showing the way with George. George, yeah, yeah. I was booking a trend. Yes. Yes. Um, anyway, we shall move on a little bit. For, from puppies to something a little bit more, well, dirtier. Do you, okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Puppies are dirty. 
Yeah, they are quite yeah. dirty. That's just what I was thinking. Yeah. So, you know, right. if, if puppies are quite dirty, mm -hmm. where are we going if we're going dirtier? I'm, we are I'm going concerned. to the world's dirtiest man. And I don't mean filth. I mean dirt. As in, who were misses? No, as in dirt. As in muck. Like muck. Muck, grime, grunge. Uh. Right? As the world's dirtiest man dies at the age 94, just after being persuaded to have a wash. Oh, well, there you go, then. Um, so here he is on screen. Oh. Yes, very dirty. He looks like... Yeah. Amu Hanj, or Hanji, reportedly gave up washing 67 years ago after becoming convinced it would bring him bad luck and may even kill him. Well, I mean, I suppose in eventuality he did have a point, mm -hmm. but I can't help but thinking that the poor man in the picture that they've taken of him does look somewhat like a troll. He does, yeah. Um, he pictures smoking four cigarettes uh, while covered in soot mm. on that one. Lovely. Um, he would often be found smoking and just eating what he wanted to, roadkill, mainly raw. I mean, that's probably why he lived to be however old he was, because, you know, his mm -hmm. immune system was like, you cannot harm me! Yeah, yeah. Um, doctors actually took him for a health check, if mm. you're concerned. And they're saying, yeah, the only thing he's got is a slight um, parasitic worm, but it's not causing him any issues. Just a slight parasitic worm. Yeah, it's not causing any issues. It wasn't issues. a heavy parasitic worm, it was just slight. It was slight, it was very thin. Very thin. Very thin. Fair enough. I've been watching it, when it was feeling a bit fat, it had cheese. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically, they'd been trying to get him to wash for years, mm. been taken to streams and that sort of thing. And they finally convinced him to go and have a, have a shower. And he went in, three weeks later, brown bread. Oh dear. Yeah. Do we, do we have a picture of, of, of him when he was washed? No. Oh. Because he died what? very quickly afterwards. Well, yes, but you'd think if someone's not washed for 67 years or however long it was, that, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd want to take him out of the shower, uh -huh. get him dry, put him in some clean clothes and then take a picture of him. Maybe didn't so you can do it before and after. Maybe he didn't want a before and after. Yeah, for the socials, exactly. You know, Insta. <laughs> All right. When he said for the socials, I'm like, I don't think they cared. <laughs> Get the social services right. Not, not no. <laughs> um, but yeah, one of his favourite pastimes was to um, smoke animal dung. Well, I believe that's a thing in the desert in Arabia. Yeah, yeah. They mm -hmm. was well, it was in camel droppings, was it? Anything they used to smoke? I, Anything can't, I, don't, would I mean, smoke. I don't, yeah. to be fair, not really an area of expertise that I have. Of, 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 of literally smoking, shit. smoking shit. Yeah, exactly. Getting high, going. This is good shit, man. Is it really? Is it? Is, is it? it? Though? Yeah. I mean, I suppose that does lend the question: that if you like feed your camels weed, do you then get high from the smoking the dung? Yeah, it depends if they've got any. Um, TCB left in it, or THC, or whatever it is. Whatever it is. THC, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. TCP. TCP. BBC. <laughs> don't smoke TCP, by the way. That would not be a good idea. Why not? Well, you know. I just smoke a funny. liquid. <laughs> well, they vape. That's what vapes do. OK. Anyway, um, and if you want to be dirty with us, why not share a picture? It's at the Good TV on social media. Now, that brings us nicely over to our story of the week. Ooh. A little bit less. Oh. More like, uh, yeah, okay. that's more like it. Yeah. Um, do you like a bargain? I've been known to like a bargain in the past, absolutely. Okay. And how do you about, feel about people that see a bargain and then buy all of it? Oh, well, that's just rude. OK. Well, that's exactly what a woman has done. Went in Wilco's. She went into Wilco's. She went into Wilco's and she spent, she bought 533 packets of a product that was only 5p. I know. <laughs> That's just terrible. 533 packets of yep. one specific product. product. Dare I ask what the particular product was? Seeds. Is? Seeds. Seeds for her garden. What kind of garden has she got? Does she live in Buckingham Palace? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is what people on social media are like, how dare she, you know, why she bought all these seeds, that's not fair. We could have had some, right? She's no way got, got a big enough garden, they'll, they'll stop working, they'll die. Um, and she turned around and said, oh, no, 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 they're for party favours for my wedding. And she knows 533 friends. She's going to be giving people that attend her wedding seeds as a way of saying thank you for coming and enjoying my special day. That she bought for 5p a packet? Yeah. The cheap cow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I've spent so much on this wedding, I can't afford too much for the party favours, but this way everyone gets a little gift. Some seeds. I mean, what happens if you live on the 24th storey of a high-rise? Let's hope she's not giving you some flower seeds. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to work, is it? 
Like maybe radishes. you could do swapsies. Let's say if she's done radish seeds, that's all right. Yeah, maybe maybe you'll do be able to do swapsies. Maybe they'll be like she'll like a set up a website where you can you know I got sunflower seeds, but I live in a high rise. Does anyone want to swap me sunflowers for some radishes or uh, socks? Yeah, but yeah, um, but yeah people have sort of stopped her and said, "What are you doing?" Like going only five p. It's for a wedding, and people are going, "Oh, if it's for a wedding, it's all right then." I would still be asking questions. I'd be taking her out of a trolley. I mean, really? Rummaging in. Going, you've not bought me yet, they're not yours. Stop me. And she couldn't stop me. But that's all from the buzz this week. Thanks for that, Mike. I shall be looking out some seed packets to throw to p at people at weddings anytime soon. <laughs> not the first person to throw seed at a wedding. But a pleasure as always. Next we have Phil and the showbiz news. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Phil and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Phil. Thanks for that, Mike. And it's now time for this week's showbiz news. So first up, what would you say your biggest dream would be? My biggest dream? Are we talking about the, the way I want to be... Um, ram railed by like seven or eight like rugby players something similar certainly we're definitely going in that direction because i don't Ooh, know nine <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you've seen it uh, uh, in the news this week about uh, a certain jason momoa jason momoa benyon row yes yes your future ex-husband future ex-husband as you've often said um uh, apparently he he's been uh, Bearing it all, quite literally. Hello. So, first of all, he posted this picture on his uh, social media. Um, apparently, this is him fishing. The fish give you a clue. Um, and he appears to be wearing a loincloth. This, of course, caused great comment across the world. And um, so he then appeared on uh, Jimmy... No, 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 that's not, no, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. You just... Sorry, One Mike minute. just wants to take a moment, or several. I want to take a moment, I want to take... Anyway. Anyway. Uh, yeah, what were we saying? So, following this, he appeared on um, the Jimmy Kimmel show in the States. <laughs> and appear on his Jimmy Kimmel show. Apparently, it was quite a feast for everybody concerned. Heather, I'm having a hard time figuring out what it's... Uh... Oh, it's very so cute. He's got a, a silk sh a top on and uh, appears to be where he's come out in his pyjamas. Oh, 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 you see, there we go, there we the go, home. and there oh. you are. Jason Momoa in a loincloth oh. with bare bum cheeks. There's choices there. I mean, and then, and then oh, he and does wiggle. a little jiggle. And a wiggle too. A little wiggle and a jiggle, and then Jimmy Kimmel gets a full view Literally from behind. Eyeful. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that clip has gone viral across the world. Need to sort my, need to yes, tissues, sorry. Mike just requires some tissues just for a moment. Just bear with us. Um, apparently, the uh, loincloth that he is wearing is um, a traditional Hawaiian dress called a malo. Apologies for the pronunciation. Um, and it's traditionally worn during celebrations and festivals um, and for other ceremoni ceremonial occasions. Um, and apparently, oh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Momoa has said that he doesn't really like wearing clothes anymore, so we'll be wearing the Marlowe forthwith from now on. So, oh, sorry, sorry, this is Hawaii. Yes. They wear that for celebrations. Apparently so. I'm not quite sure what they're celebrating. Jason but... Momoa doesn't like clothes. Anymore. Yes. Okay. Yes. Could you just have a quick have a look on there for flights to Hawaii? <laughs> um, I wouldn't like to say anything, but usually the route is via Los Angeles and then on to Hawaii from there, just saying. That's okay. I don't care. I'll get there. Just get me there if you can. <laughs> so, yeah, so now we're all a bit hot under the collar. We'll turn to something. Collar? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be polite. That's a chance. Now we'll turn to something a little more sad, shall we say. Um, Everything's more sad than Jason Momoa with his <laughs> out. I, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> it's a point. It really is a point. But I mean, you know, I think we'll 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 pull back and have a moment because. I'll let him pull back. <laughs> Jane Fonda, 
who's apparently 84, would you believe? I didn't think she was I that old. But anyway, yeah. um, she's 84 yeah. and um, she's announced that she knows that she isn't going to be around for much longer, um, which is hardly a surprise, given that she's 84. I mean, she looks really good for 84, to be honest with you. That yeah. is a celebrity who actually knows when to stop uh, with the enhancing of the uh, facial features, shall we okay. say. Um, anyway, apparently she has recently been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a type oh of cancer, um, and um, is apparently says that ordinarily it's relatively treatable. Um, but obviously at her age, um, there are um, some concerns over how well she'll respond to therapy. But oh I think, you know, she, she's a, a, an A-lister and a, a stalwart of Hollywood, and so we wish her all of the best. I think we do actually have a picture of her as a young woman, so we can see quite how hot she was. I mean, look oh. at that. Aside from, obviously, the uh, fabulous hairdo um, with the backcombing, I mean, that is one hot lady. So She's aged, though. Well, you kind of do from whenever that was, about 20 to 84. I mean, I suspect she's going to be looking a bit wo wo more worn. But, yeah, so anyway, that's so we good, wish... I was going to say, like, a scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> she Can't looks a bit more scrotum. <laughs> yes, Fonda we can. Scrotum. If we can put the first picture of James Fonda back up on the screen, <laughs> right, just for one second. <laughs> right, that scrotum area... I don't think that's what they call it in, 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 in you know... Oh, it's teabagging when you get it there, <laughs> isn't it? But, and, yeah. Ta well, I think you'll be very rude about the poor lady. Anyway, we wish you well, Ms Fonda, and I, hope... I hope she gets better soon. Get better, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Now, our final story will possibly not excite very many people, or possibly it will, who knows? It was certainly a global phenomenon in its first iteration, the TV show Glee. Oh. I thought we were going back to Jason Momoa's Yeah, sorry, no, that, that, that's still a global <sighs> phenomenon, iterations aside. Um, so apparently the TV show Glee, um, Ryan Murphy, the um, original uh, producer and developer of the show, is in talks with Disney, who uh, owned the television producer company um, that produced Glee the first time, um, to reboot it, oh, apparently. However, Given Glee's history and the fact that of its original stars, three of them are very sadly dead, I'm not sure I would be rushing to be in the reboot of Glee. And also, um, the main producer guy has been a bit controversial. Oh, yes, there's a bit of controversy there, isn't there, as being well, racist. from that point of view. And then, obviously, yeah, um, several accusations made about one of the other main characters and her behaviour on set mm -hmm. um, and, and things like that. Um, apparently, um, the uh, character, Rachel's character, um, this lady here, mm -hmm. is currently starring in Broadway in Funny Girl, which okay. if you watched Glee, you would know was um, one of her, the character's um, ideal I, um, roles. That was what she really wanted to do. Her dream was to play um, in Funny Girl on Broadway. So she's doing that. Jane Lynch was also in Funny love Girl. Love Jane Lynch. We do love Jane Lynch, but apparently Jane Lynch, Jane Lynch left first... Um, left Funny Girl just as uh, Rachel from Glee was joining the cast. Oh. Take from that what you will. That they have different contracts. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. It's all it's all just contractual. Um, and then you've got Mr Shoe with his bum chin, as Jane Lynch's character always used to call it. I it still would. It was a bit bummy. I still would, though. He was very hot. It's quite short, though. I can work with short. No, it quite short. Not like... I can, I can work with tiny. short. It doesn't matter. I can work with that. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's all, all works. All works for me. But it's just like you've got... If you look at the, those that picture there, you've got Jay Lynch, Bill that played Rachel, and the guy that played Mr Shoe, and then the producer. Yeah. And three of them look like they've made an effort. He looks like Elmer Fudd. Well, I suppose, but then if you're a producer, you don't really need to make an effort because you're behind the camera, aren't you? But he's in front of the camera there. Yeah, well, you know, he's made his money, so it doesn't really matter, does mm. it? You know, he's got his, his money, that's fine. Um, loving Jane Lynch's outfit. It's a nice fuchsia blouse, yeah, yeah from that point of view. Nice. Um, yeah, it's good. 
Cool. Yeah. When are we expecting this this monstrosity to be back? Uh, well, our, apparently our the first of June has been mooted, which apparently is a a, 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 um, a propitious date. Um, propitious date. Yes, a good date. Oh, okay. Yes. It's just <laughs> Fortuitous or propitious, of, of good fortune. A nice um, day, a good yes. time to have, yeah. Because um, it marks apparently the uh, launch of the Pride Month celebrations. Yeah, Pride Month, yeah. And Glee was obviously considerably enjoyed by many members of the LGBTQIA plus community whilst it was on the first time round. Mm -hmm. So we will have to wait and see what Disney Plus comes up with next. Well, coming up with more Glee, innit? It's just songs, people singing. People singing. I mean, that would be a Disney thing, though, wouldn't it? Disney does people singing in things. And drawing them. I mean, there's no evidence yet that Glee's going to be a cartoon version, although that would be an interesting take on the show, certainly. Good choice. Hmm, it yeah. would be a choice. So they did a lot of mashups on Glee as well. Yes, they did. Do you have they a favourite mashup that they did? Uh, no, I don't have a favourite mashup that they did, but when they did the Madonna episode, I did absolutely love the Vogue that they did because they had Jane Lynch as Madonna within um, a caricature pastiche of the original video. And that pastiche? was very good. A pastiche? We are on the wrong, shall we? Because <laughs> I was thinking, a, a pasty? No, not, not a pasty, a pastiche. <laughs> it's a French pasty, basically. That's le pasty, isn't it? No, la pasty, it's feminine. <laughs> How's a pasty feminine? You're just sticking your d*** in it. Yeah, it's just how the French language works. You just have to go with it, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't make the rules. The French did, so you'll have to ask them. Anyway, so that is all of the showbiz news from this week for your digestion and excitement. And hopefully we'll be bringing you more news next week. A f***ing pasty. <laughs> well, stick around, because coming up we've got a game of the week. I genuinely want a pasty. You're watching Chew in the Cud. This week we're going to play Lazy Susan's No Longer That Musical, Musical Roulette. And this one is for our very own bonded practitioner, Phil. So off you meander. With your bondage. Game of the Week. So Phil has the Musical Roulette in front of him. Oh, it's not musical anymore, it's just questions. Let's rename it. Are you ready, Phil? I'm ready. Give it a spin. Oh, excitement. Oh, try not to destroy the place. Comes in, destroys the set. Uh, well, you know, what more do you want? So, do a, oh, proper, a proper spin. spin. Well, he told me to be careful with it. Yeah, can you start to break it? It's movies. Oh, movies. Don't say the question. What is the name of the yellow and blue fish in Disney's The Little Mermaid? Mm, chips. <laughs> no, funnily enough, you'll find it's not un chips. Fish and chips? No, it's not un chips. Any idea? Nemo. Nemo. No, that's a different Disney movie. Dory. No, also a different Disney movie. Jaws. Not a Disney movie, although it is now, isn't it? Do they not own it? I can't really remember. But not Jaws either. Um. Boaty McBoat face. <laughs> no, that's a remote submersible vehicle. It's... Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> it's Flounder. Oh. oh, the wee blue fish. We go for another wee spin. Yeah, go for an actual spin rather than a wee one. Oh, we've got history. Oh, not very good at this one. Can't remember stuff. <clears throat> Ancient Egyptian tomb robbers thought they could escape any curses left in a burial chamber by knocking what off the sarcophagi? The tourist information sign. <laughs> the tourist information sign. That's the wrong answer. Do you want to have another go? Or is it the right answer for a different question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's always possible, but it's unlikely to be a history question. The correct answer is the nose. Oh. 
apparently. Not that off to spite their face, didn't they? And they did, indeed. In fact, to not spite their face, because they were trying to avoid a curse. Yeah, something like that anyway. Right, we'll go for another spin. Woo! I enjoyed that far too much. Well, you know. Movies. Again, with the movies. Okay, I'm never speaking to you again if you get this incorrectly. In the Harry Potter series, oh, fuck. what is the name for non-magical people? Is it the one where Robert Pattinson dies? Because you know that's the only one I like because he dies. It doesn't matter, it's just whatever they call non-magical people across the whole series. Robert Pattinson. No, he, he's not non-magical, he's a wizard in the, in, in the show, in the film. Oh, the big guy with the furry shoulders and the hat. That was, you mean Hagrid? No, not with the hair, with the hat. The hat. That's trying to shaft Hermione when Robert Patterson dies. Oh, Victor Crumb. That's the one. No, not him. No, no, no non-magical people. Like, what do wizards call non-magical people? Jeff. <laughs> not Jeff. No, they're muggles. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Right, another spin. Let's see where we get. Oh, it's between two. Do you want history or culture? Culture. Cult culture. Like germs. Culture. Cult culture. Culture. Like a yoghurt. What did the ancient Greeks award to the winners of sporting events? Just the tip. <laughs> a thumb. No, randomly. What did the pink two in the stink? What? What? Huh? What did the pink two in the stink? No. Apparently celery. I think I'd be a bit irritated if, you know, I'd just won some Was it kind in of... the Bloody Mary? I, I don't know, but I mean, you know, imagine you've just won some kind of massive sporting event and here, have a stick of celery. Uh, not death, I think, is what you win. You know. yeah, yeah, true, true. But uh, that's more the Romans, though. They were very fond of putting people to death. They all like to die, don't they? Sorry? They all died a lot. Well, yes. But sometimes they died of natural causes, and right. no, in Roman times, natural causes was a spear. I was going to say, I promise you, every single person alive in ancient Greece is now dead. It's, it's true. I mean, it, it is a fact. It's, uh, you, can't, you, you, you can't dispute that. Right, I'm going for another spin. Oh, science. That's science, that is. Apparently so. Can't read it if it's upside down. How often does Halley, or Haley, depending on your pronunciation, how often does Halley's comet pass the Earth? This is a trick question. No, it is not. It doesn't pass the Earth. We intersect its orbit. No, not quite. We do. <laughs> we actually do. Its orbit is going round, we go through it. Yeah, but it like oh well, never mind. It's seventy six years. It's every seventy six years. What did it last go through? Nineteen eighty something. Oh, I'm not gonna see it again then am I? No. Well you'll be dead. was it early eighties or after? I think it was mid eighties. Oh yeah, I'm screwed. Yeah, you'll be dead. Sorry. Oh that's only lived to eighty something. Mm. No, not gonna happen. Right, another spin. Did you kill me off a young age. <laughs> oh, it's another history. Oh, history repeating. No one tells Shirley Bassey. A labourer in ancient Egypt worked how many days before getting two days rest? Some. Well, I, I mean, some would be an answer. It's not Wait, the right answer. but well, it's, an, it's the right answer. Some days. OK, so, some days. Uh, so basically, how long, how many days was the Egyptian week before you got a weekend? Seven. No, ten. But... There we yeah, go. Slave labour, you get what you pay for. I don't think they paid them. That's the point. Uh, okay. And spin again. Ooh, science. More that science, that is. That science, that is. Ugh. Approximately what fraction of your normal weight would you be if you weighed yourself on the moon? Is 
this after or before a poo? We'll go after. After a poo. Mm -hmm. I would be twelfty. Twelfty. Nearly, you'd be sick a sixth of your weight. Would I? Would I? Would I be muscly too? No, unfortunately not. Then how? You might I be a bit taller. Weight? How have I lost the weight? What? How have I lost the weight if I'm not muscly? So, weight is the effect of mass in gravity. So you have a mass that's one kilogram on the surface of the Earth and you move it to the surface of the Moon because the gravitational attraction of the Moon is lower than the Earth. Its weight would be a sixth of the Earth, but it still has a mass of one kilogram. That's where people get confused, you see. So, so the mash and gravy make you lighter? Only if you've got sausages. OK, that's mm. fine. Yeah. Yeah. And we're spinning again. I don't like those. I'm going to go for movies. <laughs> the wheel. <laughs> I am disobeying the wheel. You're just all going to have to live with it. In the movie, The Matrix, what is the name of the actress who plays Trinity? Trinity. Yeah, that's the character's name. You want the actress. You're a knob. Mini driver. <laughs> uh, no, no, it wasn't mini driver. Mini driver? She, it's not. She, it, it was, not, it, it was driver. not mini driver. Mini driver. She, were, she were in Phantom of the Opera film. Opera. <laughs> yeah, no, it was Carrie Ann Moss. Oh, sister of Kate. <laughs> More science. We're I'm getting through these science questions quickly. Which... Mm, now, you see, this is an incorrect question. The question says, which of the planets is so light that it would float on water? The moon. That's not a planet. It's a moon. Hence it being called the moon. Well, other moons aren't called the moon, but they're the moon. But they're also moons, but that not planets. Not the moon. <laughs> if you're on Jupiter, is the moon the moon? Uh, well, no, because they have lots of moons on Jupiter. OK, so is it the moons? It's not the moons, no. So you it's... look up at the moon and it's the moon, but you look up at the moons, it's not the moons. <laughs> you look up the moon on Earth, it's the moon. But uh -huh. because the but moon is called the moon, the scientific community has decided that all satellites in orbit around planetary bodies are moons. So the satellites are now moons as well. Well, uh, yeah, technically, not, actually, under scientific, so, uh, under under astronomy, a, a an artificial satellite is actually technically a moon of the Earth. So, so we don't have the moon anymore. We have the moons. No, we still have the moon because that's its singular. Well, the moons. Oh, you're just being difficult now. Answer the bloody question. <laughs> Jane Fonda. It was not Jane Fonda. She is well. I mean, she probably does float in water, but she's not a planet. Captain Planet. No, there, there are in fact only, apart from the Earth, only like seven other planets to choose from. Pick one. One. <laughs> you can go off some people, you know. The answer Pluto. is... Pluto! That's also not a planet anymore. I just don't know anymore. Oh, um, stick around as... Oh, it's our new segment. Medical Matters with Dr Phil. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time to become all medical-like as we open up our bulging sack and dump out all of your issues in Medical Matters with Dr Phil. Time for Medical Matters with me, Dr Phil. Not that Dr Phil, by the way. So, what have we got up first? So, first we have a little message from Rico. Hello, Rico. Okay. Um, and he says, Dear Dr Phil, I've been suffering with a shameful addiction for many years. It's impacted my relationships and even my job as a supermarket store manager. 
I've tried to substitute the thrill and ecstasy I feel with alcohol, gambling, smoking and even Class A drugs, but nothing has helped. I'm at the end of my tether and I know I need help but know where to turn. It started when I was 21 and now at the age of 49 I can't continue living with such a shameful addiction. I know there must be some help out there for people like me. Please help me Dr Phil. Whenever I see a Finsbury gooseberry and cinnamon yoghurt, I can't help but smear it on my nipples. What can I do? On a professional note, I would suggest that you speak to your GP and ask to be referred to addiction services where you should be able to get the help that you need. They may be able to introduce you to other types of yoghurt. There are lots of different flavours out there and all of them are as good on the nipples as a gooseberry yoghurt. Thank you for that, Dr Phil. And thank you, Rico, for sharing that problem with us. Shall we have a look at the next one? And the next one comes for us from Mark. Okay. And he says, Dear Dr Phil, I have recently fallen while preparing a salad and a cucumber that was recently covered in mayo slipped up my bum. I've tried to remove it, but I ended up swallowing it when I accidentally hiccuped. What can I do? Well, Mark, this is a problem that is actually surprisingly common. Up and down emergency departments, up and down the country, have endless streams of people attending who apparently were walking through their houses whilst naked and slipped and fell randomly upon multiple different objects. Anything from light bulbs to cucumbers to toys to on one memorable occasion, a fork. My advice is best get yourself up to accident and emergency. You really need a cucumberectomy. OK. Don't do it in front of your salad, is what I always say. Um, well, thank you for that, Dr Phil, and thank you for sharing that one with us, Mark. Shall we see what we've got next? This one comes from Matthew. Dear Dr Phil, I have been infested with pubic lice for the past nine months. I have tried so many things to get rid of them. I've shaved off all my body hair, waxed, taken both hot and cold baths, and I've even smothered my lowers in lard. And where not a wholly unpleasant experience, the itchy little f is still there. I even sponged my nether regions down with lighter fluid and flicked lit matches at them, but apart from the smell of burning flesh, nothing much happened. Please help me get rid of my scratchy roommates. Well, uh, sorry, what, what was the gentleman's name Matthew. again? Matthew. Matthew. Unfortunately, one of the things that most people don't realise when they have lice is that actually if you shave, you just encourage the lice to burrow into all of the hair follicles and make it even more difficult to get rid of them. Isn't that nice? My best advice is to get yourself down to the pharmacy where you can get a medication called permethrin, which is an anti-parasite medication. Unlike with the lard, you smear it all over yourself. Leave it on for a few hours and then wash it off. Sometimes you have to repeat and rinse a couple of times, but that should get rid of, as you like to put it, the nasty little Well, thank you for that, Doctor. I feel itchy now. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Mike. <laughs> like all over itchy. Proper. When people talk about nits and you can't help it. I'm not even got hair and I'm like, ah. Anyway, thank you for that, Dr Phil. And thank you for sharing your, your, your issue there, Matthew. Shall we have a look at the next one? Have we got time for one more? We've got, we've got time for several more. Oh, jolly good. Dear Dr Phil, I have recently removed a mayo-covered cucumber from up my rectum. However, I fell over and slipped and I've managed to get a light bulb covered in lube stuck up there. What can I do now? Thanks from Mark. I mean, Mark, really, we had this conversation last time. Go to a &E, have it removed, and really, stop sticking things up your ass. It's not big, it's not clever, and frankly, we're sick of having to wash the instruments. I'll wash them then. <laughs> OK, well, thank you for that, Dr Phil, and thank you for, for sharing that one with us, Mark. Hope you get Again. your rear end sorted soon. Um, shall we get the next one up? Absolutely. Dear Dr Phil, my boyfriend refuses to let me give him a handjob. I know that I'm not the best at it, 
but he has said that it's a risk of causing him a real issue. He said that the risk of getting the old ham shank, that he could suddenly start to speak a foreign language. I didn't know a five-finger trouser shuffle could have such a side effect. So when I googled it, it's true. Apparently, you can speak a foreign language after having a traumatic stroke. What can I do? And that's from Marvin. Mais Marvin, je ne suis pas sûr. Oh, sorry, uh, I was uh, having a stroke there. Um, Me too, I've got some tissues, I'll be all right. Uh, fair enough. As I understand it, the problem is that you're a bit shit at giving a handy. My honest advice is get down the local sauna, find yourself some punters and have a good practice. Because really, you should be able to give someone a proper handy. Otherwise, you're just a bit rubbish. Let's get one more up. Dear Dr Phil, I have recently had a light bulb and a cucumber removed from my bottom. However, I have found a small family of rodents have taken up holidaying in my now widened chocolate starfish. Is there a way of tightening my now voluminous love hole? And that comes from Mark. In a word, no, you slack arsed slut. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> There's not really much else I can add, Mark. Short of having your bum hole sewn up, you're just going to have to exercise some self-control. Well, I hope that answers all of your questions, Mark, and I hope that you stop yourself with other objects soon. I think we've got time for one last one. Dear Dr Phil, I have recently found out my ex-partner has found botfly larva and I'm concerned that they've passed it on to me. I'm a very prominent member of parliament and I don't want anyone to know that I could have this issue. What can I do? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Botfly larvae are not sexually transmitted. So unless you have been to an endemic area for botflies, you're unlikely to have picked up the botfly larva from your partner. However, I would suggest that your partner attends one of the local infectious diseases centres to have the botfly removed. It can be very satisfying. Well, well, thanks for that, Dr Phil. I think that's all that we have time for. Thank you, Mike. And remember, whatever matters to you medically matters to me on Medical Matters with Dr Phil. How did you love your own little segment? Oh, it was wonderful. Although it's quite a large segment, really. I have guess you're through. <laughs> so, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media, at The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And, of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye. You've got bees on your tip. Oh, no, so it's Manchester, isn't it? Oh, that's, that's uh, Manchester. Yeah, Manchester bees. Not to be down with the locals. In it, it were. In it. <laughs> <laughs>